Hey there, viewers, and welcome to Season 2 of Happy Hunting, the show for hunts and hunters on the Second Life Grid. We're really happy to be back with you, and we are going to have lots of fun things to talk about in the coming months. Our sponsors for the show are Prem Perfect Publications and Treat TV. And right now, I'm going to move right into the latest hunt news and tell you what's going on out there on the grid. Now, over to my right are uh, some great things for you, especially if you are a kid avatar. We have a lovely model here showing off one of the hunt dresses in the It's So Pink hunt. It's a kid's hunt. And the start location is at Roar Muffins, and the hunt organizer is Maddie Giraffe. And this hunt is going to run until the end of August, and there are great items there for all the kid avatars out on the grid. And of course, it's not all going to be girly stuff, so be sure to get out there and check this hunt out. Now, the hunt item that, excuse me, the hunt object you are looking for is a butterfly. So keep your eyes open find them and get some great hunt gifts like this particular outfit here is actually part of a set of two which you can also see on the cutout figure there which is very cute with the giraffe and the bluebird on the pink background and this was a really cool gift because it's two in one how can you beat that so check that one out and of course uh, there'll be many more kid avatar hunts coming up especially with Halloween coming so Keep informed. You don't want to miss out. Now, the next hunt I want to talk about is the Skull and Bones, the Pirate Hunt 2. And, of course, this is obviously a swashbuckling pirate-themed hunt. And my show producer is showing an outfit that is just for petites from this hunt. And as you can see, it's really cute and comes with a darling and dashing pirate's hat and some cool boots and the whole outfit is just great and as many of you are aware the petite community is definitely growing and more and more creators and designers are working to make more things to include in the hunts for petites so this is just one of the things you can get and over on the table is part of what you would guess you would call the starting kit you get the cool pirate hat the tri-corner hat and there you've got the Skull and Bones Res Helper, which you will wear during the hunt to help you find things. Some, oh, traditional pirate hoop earrings. And what pirate would be seen without their bottle of rum? I mean, really. So this is going to be a very fun one for those of you who like to look a little piratey and dashing out on the seven seas when you're sailing around the Linden Oceans. Now, this hunt is going to be running until just August 25th, so hurry up and get out there and finish this hunt up. Now, it's just a cost of one linden per hunt, per hunt item, so that's not much at all. And I believe this hunt will have about 200 stores or stops, and this will be a great fun one to do. Now, this is one that they made a great... Uh, stand on this. There is no visible decoy, so there should not be any fake hunt items to trick you. So that should make it a lot more straightforward for you to finish. So be sure to check this one out. Have a lot of fun doing this one. And then over we have some items from the past and future hunt. Now this is put on by the Melnica events. Uh, who have been on the show before, and they put on hunts pretty regularly. And as you can tell by the title, this is a hunt where you could have a trip down memory lane or wonder what the future might bring. So it should be a wide range of items. And the hunt object you are looking for is that clock face with the purple rim. And I do believe they have made it pretty strong that it can't be shrunk down too small so it shouldn't drive you crazy to find and over here you just see the tri clock which has got some great quotations and inspiration there that was from the bees heaven shop and i love their little gift bag or balloon as you would call it 
And then one of these stores that's taking part, of course, is A Touch of Ireland, who does a lot of hunts. And I like this one because they included in the same folder a gift for the male and the female. And this is an outfit that you can use all year round from summer, for Halloween, for Christmas parties, New Year's, Easter, everything. So you can really get a lot of use out of that. And we have some great items here with the two quilts, which were from the uh, same store. And uh, one is animated, one is not. So that was kind of a fun gift. And you may be wondering about the porch that I am in. This was one of the gifts from the past and future hunt. And you get everything that's here. All of the furniture, the table, the table uh, stuff on the table. It's a really fun thing and just perfect if you want to just stick it out on the outside of your home or out in your garden. A really great gift. Oh, and yes, the phonograph does come with it. And this is from Exquisite Eye. And this is a really fun hunt to do. This one will end on August 31st. It's got 150 stores. So you still have lots of time to hit this one and get some really great gifts. Oh, and don't forget to pick up the Past and Future Hunt magazine that Melnica put out. Now, I would like to move on to some of the hunts that are going to be coming up. Now, for those of you who are starting to want to get into kind of the feeling for fall, yes, I know it's still summer, but fall is coming. There is the Harvest Moon Hunt, which will run from August 26th to September 16th. And your hunt items you'll be looking for is a yellow and orange maple leaf. They are planning on 50 stores. And, of course, this is going to be a harvest time autumn-themed hunt. So you could get everything from clothing to jumping into autumn leaves and any and everything. And there will be just a one linden uh, price or donation or whatever you want to call it to get the hunt item. So this should be a lot of fun. And this is a group that puts on lots of hunts, so it'll be very well organized. Now, for again, for the petite community, there will be, oh, I'm sorry, this already started, the Enchanted Petite Hunt. This will end on September 12th, and it's everything for petites. The hunt item you are looking for is a little fairy. The hunt item price is five linden. That's not bad at all. You're going to have a lot of fun. There is no theme to this hunt, so that means the designers and creators could just let their imaginations fly in what they put out there for those who like being a petite avatar. So there is a group, so if you need a little help here and there, you can always ask in that group. So be sure to check that one out. After all, petites are super cool. Now there's another one that will be coming up called What Do You Sell Hunt? This will start August 30th and run to September 30th. And it's just like what it sounds. This is a chance for maybe some lesser known creators and designers to get out there and be seen. And the hunt items will be any and everything. It's a chance for them to show their imagination and creativity, to show you, the viewer, the best things that they can create. This will be a smaller hunt, 50 shops. And the hunt items will be set to one linden each. Again, that's really a great way to get some great stuff. And the last hunt I'm going to talk about is the historic hairdo's hunt. Now, this one I think is going to be great fun. It will be starting August 15th and run till September 15th. And of course, just like what it sounds, it's going to be hysteric, oh, sorry, historic hairdos and hair accessories. That is all that's going to be included. So this will include like shaved hair bases, flowers, hair bands, hats, just as long as it ties in with history in some way. I think this will be a great one. I'm not too sure if there are going to be mullets in there for you guys, but you never know. So have a lot of fun doing this one. I think you will have a great time. And uh, we all can do with a little bit more hair. So I think that's it about right now. And of course, for more information about these hunts that I've talked about, just go to our blog at happyhuntingtv.wordpress.com and we'll have everything you need there. 
And of course, if you happen to see a hunt sign when you're looking around, that means that store is in a hunt. Go and check it out. You might just get some great stuff. Okay, we are going to take our first break. And when we come back, I will have my first guest, who is Rosamund Mendelssohn. She is one of the main bloggers for the Hunt SL blog site and Bleed Me Hunters. This is a great place to go to find out about hunts. And if you're a merchant, this is a great way to find out about hunts that you can take part in and get your store seen. All right, stay with us. And when we come back, I'll be interviewing Rosamuth. Well, here we are again, viewers, with our newest segment in the brand new season for Happy Hunting. And right now, I am going to interview Rosamu Mendelssohn. She is one of the para bloggers who are responsible for keeping the hunt listings location of Hunt SL all up to date and ready for us to go and do some hunts. Welcome, Rosamu. Thank you. It's good to be here. Now, of course, you do have a partner, Sheena Nishi, who wasn't able to be with us here today, but I'm sure you're going to do a wonderful job filling in for the both of you. I hope so. <laughs> and, you know, sorry, Shia, but maybe next time you'll be able to be with us. I sure hope so. That would be nice. Now, how did the two of you decide to start doing the listing Hunt SL? Well, we wanted to create something that we could use that would have the information available that we were looking for. Um, we function, we're hunters to begin with, but we have also been running hunts for several years and we're also vendors in a lot of hunts, merchants in hunts. And we wanted something, we wanted to arrange the information in a way that it was easily accessible for all of those different needs because you've seen it from both sides of the coin yeah 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 well it's sort of it's a three-part piece because the needs of the organizers and the needs of the merchants sometimes sort of get lumped together but they're a little bit separate and then um, the needs of the hunters is of course very different well, you're right. It really is a three-sided pyramid all merged together for a common goal. But the needs of each group are a little bit different, and organization is key for everybody. And ease of accessibility of information. That's, that was our primary goal, I think, um, to be able to make it as simple as possible to find the application so you could get into a hunt, uh, which also helps organizers uh, get more more merchants for their hunts if it's easy for the merchants to access it. And then as hunters, of course, we want to be able to, to grab the hunts and the slurls and get started right away, as easily as possible. And it is a lot better for everyone where if somebody's putting on a specifically themed hunt, it's nice for the merchants to have the opportunity to get into a hunt that really works for whatever they create or make, then it yes. matches well. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, there's there are a lot of um, general hunts, but then I think more and more there are sort of specifically specific themed hunts um, that are fun to do as well. Oh, I agree completely. As a hunter myself, I definitely make use of your hunt blog or hunt listing. And uh, as a merchant, I'm starting to venture into the world of being a vendor a little bit more. And again, it's a very handy and useful tool. It's all in one spot, and you give some great advice. Oh, thank you. Um, we, we have a couple of pages. One is for organizers, some suggestions, and we're always looking for, for new suggestions from people. There's a comment tab at the bottom for, for anybody who has a suggestion for organizers of what works and what doesn't work. And there's also a wonderful page that we had reprinted with permission, which is good for hunters. It's sort of the etiquette of how to hunt. 
and what's sort of expected as a good hunter, what you will do, what, what you can, what is expected of you as a good hunter sort of to make it a better experience for everybody involved, both yourself and for the merchants. Yes, please do not literally run over your fellow hunters. We oh. will assume that you just <laughs> haven't seen them yet because they haven't resed in, but you know, don't do that consistently. <laughs> yes, I always keep my little mini map open <laughs> so I know where people are. <laughs> See, that's a great hunt tip. That's the same thing I do is I always have mini map open. So even if I can't see them, I can see their green dot. Yep. <laughs> and hopefully not walk over the top of their head. And for anybody I've done that to in the past, I sincerely apologize. I just couldn't see you. <laughs> or you didn't come in fast enough. <laughs> that is something we all learn. Now, how long have you and Shia been in Second Life? Um, I've been here for about something over four years, and he's been here for oh, well over five years. Uh, we've been we started doing hunts, and then uh, three years ago in December, this coming December will be three years since we we organized our first hunt together. That was that was the beginning, and we've been doing hunts uh, regularly. On is his he has a a sim with a with a mall. Yeah, it's an, an adult sim, but we do hunts uh, all the time. We must do six a year over there. So it keeps oh us busy. Oh my goodness. I yeah. would definitely say so, along with everything else that you're both busy mm-hmm. doing, but somehow you manage to squeeze the fun part in, and that's great. Now, in your opinion, what are some of the worst mistakes that a hunt organizer can make? Well, the, the, I think the only real serious no-no is if, if your hunt gets stopped somewhere along the way where it becomes not possible for the hunters to continue. I know some, some organizers say, oh, well, I don't want to put slurls because in linked slurls because, you know, I want people to go from one to the next. I don't want them to be able to jump around and cherry pick. Um, but if you can't, it, there, there are so many times when something can come up, when a store goes belly up and doesn't tell you, all sorts of things like that that stop. If you can't, if the hunters can't get on to the next one, and if you're not paying attention and making sure that nobody's done that to you as a as an organizer, um, that's that's the biggest problem. Uh, we like to see also when because we hunt every day, almost every day that we're we're in SL. Um, we like to see hints. And I don't mind, you know, if there's a small store, if it doesn't have a hint, that's fun. But if it's a big store and somebody gives you a bad hint or a or no hint, <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> long time wandering through a big store, um, those are those are the two things probably that are the most important. And I think for hunters, they also need to remember that because you can't teleport to some place. Don't get all mad and upset because sometimes, and this has happened, folks. I've been yeah. in hunt groups and someone, is their store is in a hunt. They put a lot of time and effort. They did everything correctly. And they're renting space from someone and then suddenly that sim has been sold. Mm. And everything they had got returned and they were not warned in advance. In yep. which case, this poor person is panicked. They're trying to find somebody else. They're trying to reach the hunt organizer to say, you know, my store just got returned to me. I'm trying to find somewhere else to rent. And as soon as I can, I will send you the new location. But, you know, can you please, you know, skip me for right now until I get this wrapped up? So, folks, you know, don't rant and rave. There may be actually a reason that store is not there. the, The other thing that happens often is that sims go down. They get restarted and you can't get there you just can't get there because there's the sim is just and if and you have to if you try then you're stuck and you have to wait and try again in five minutes or ten minutes and very often you can get back then and again that's where if you have the hints and the slurls folks it doesn't matter if you skip ahead you can always go back you're going to have your hunt folder You're going to see where you're missing what number. You're missing number 34. You can catch it later. 
doesn't have yeah. to be strictly in sequence. <laughs> Although some people like to do it that way. <laughs> well, that's true. Now, of course, all of this also ties in with attention to detail and everything for a hunt. Yes. Yes. And, and um, paying attention and staying with the hunt. I think once an organizer, once a hunt gets started, sometimes the organizers think, phew, I did it now. It's, you know, it's off and running and I don't have to think about it. But really, if, you, if you're running a hunt, you just do have to sort of stay with it and keep following up and make sure everything's continuing to run smoothly. And if a problem comes up and your vendors are trying to reach you because there's a problem, it is nice if they can get a hold of you. It's better for everybody. Yep. Yes, organizers ask vendors, merchants, for a, a backup contact, but they don't often give you a second contact if you're a merchant looking for an organizer. Again, attention to detail and making it a good experience for everybody involved. Mm. Now, with everything else that you're doing, now how much time do you and Shia put into Hunt SL, say, every week? Uh, well, Shia puts in time every day. He updates the, the Hunt blog, the, the listings, uh, literally every day. Uh, probably he puts in between one and two hours. Uh, but just making sure if he's got a new, a new list, uh, Hunt to post or... Uh, if somebody's starting, something's ending, try to keep in touch and, and let people know a little bit in advance when things are ending so they'll have a few days to grab that last that last minute hunt. Um, so he's, he's literally there every day. I probably put in about four or five hours a week sort of updating the, the links for, for the most part. Well, it sounds to me like a very successful partnership. Yes, it works pretty well for us. <laughs> and it seems to work well for the, for the hunt listings. Well, I think trying to do something like your hunt listing, Hunt SL, would be mind-boggling if it was just one person. Sharing the load, sharing the responsibility, and bouncing ideas off of each other. That's got to be good. Yeah, no question. I, if it was just me, there's no way I could do it. It's, it's a tremendous amount of, of commitment. And it's nice to have each other to sort of Keep you, keep you going. Well, I certainly appreciate the fact that the both of you work very hard to make Hunt SL accurate, as up-to-date as possible, and you keep it freshened up. You make sure that the information is current. That is so nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we do our best. Thank you for, for, the, for the acknowledgement. Well, as a hunter, I really appreciate it, and I'm sure many of our viewers who have utilized your hunt listing are also very, very grateful for that accuracy. And I also want to make sure that we talk about the fact that they not only can bookmark your hunt listing, but if they go to your HQ building, they can go over and pick up a box of Hunt SL signs which, of course, are no modified because, as you have informed me, it is a direct, you click on it, you have uh, multiple sizes to choose from, you res it out, you click on it, and it immediately takes you to your web page. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, um, the script for that is why we can't make the mod. And so you get various sizes from almost nano to uh, quite, quite substantial in size, depending on what your particular needs are. So, see, hunters, you can res one of these out in your home, sit in your easy chair or your beach chair or whatever, click on it, and start looking at the hunts that are coming up or what's current. How much easier can that be? And there are a lot of hunts right now. We've got, um, we're tracking 100, about 112, I think, she has said. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It oh, seems overwhelming, word. but that, that's all the hunts that are actually a active now. It also includes affairs. We've started uh, blogging fairs, uh, but it also goes all the way to Christmas. We've got the first Christmas hunt going. So, <laughs> Oh, my word. Okay. It, covers, it covers a lot of ground. Well, the fall season is coming quickly. I did notice when I checked today how many more fall and even, like you said, some early winter hunts are now taking applications. 
Folks, the numbers are climbing every day, so if you're looking forward to hunts, definitely keep checking out. And if you're a merchant, get going. Some of these deadlines are coming up quickly, and if you want to be in some really great hunts, you've got to get moving pretty quickly. And while you're at their HQ for Hunt SL, be sure to pick up their Hunt SL hunting kit, which looks like a lot of fun stuff in there and gets you in the mood. And you can also pick up an outfit to go hunting in. So how much easier is that? And that was a great idea you two had. Well, we wanted to celebrate sort of some of the milestones. When we hit 50,000 um, views, it was like, it was a shock to us that we got there so fast. Um, and we wanted to just do something to say thank you to everybody who'd been so good and loyal and all the people who keep coming back. And we'll probably do it again with something. <laughs> well, I think you can safely say, uh, and we will all freely admit it, we are addicts. <laughs> we love to hunt. They're so much fun. And it's such a great feeling to open up a box or a bag or a folder and get something really cool yes, inside I of love, there. I love hunting. Along with all the other things you do besides hunting here in SL. Yes. Well, it's it's like puzzles somehow to me. And I just, I just, I guess I have to raise my hand and say I'm Rosa Moo and I'm a hauntaholic. <laughs> have you ever had a shirt made saying that? Not yet, but we might. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a lot of fun. We should all have a shirt with our names and saying I'm a hauntaholic. It would be so <laughs> apropos. We could start a new fashion trend here in Second Life. You never know. It could catch on. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. There are a lot of hunters out there. Well, that is certainly true. And you have fulfilled a great need by all hunters and vendors who want to be in hunts. And you have, the two of you, have made it so easy for us to find out all this information and take part and go and have a lot of fun and get some great stuff at the same time. Well, it good. is wonderful work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. Well, you certainly are, and I'm so happy that you were able to be here on Happy Hunting today with us and spreading the word about the Hunt SL listing. Oh, thank you for having us. And I hope in the future, if you have any changes or something really great coming up that you'll let us know and be a return guest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, viewers, that's it for this part. And we're going to take a short station break. And when we come back, we are going to show you something very special, a new addition to the Happy Hunting Show about a brand new aspect of happy hunting and something very special for you to watch. So stay tuned and we will be right back. Radio Real is an internet public radio station with multiple streams on the air daily. We play an extensive variety of music for listeners with eclectic taste, from early music to Victoriana, big band and folk, plus drama and special programs. For more details, visit radioreal.org. The best things in life are free. Welcome back, viewers, to a very special section of our show. It is a new concept for happy hunting that we are going to show you today. Now, the first thing you are going to be treated to is a very special trailer for our new segment called The Blackened Mirror. And when we come back, I'll be speaking to Xander Green who is portraying Quinn, a most fascinating character in what we are calling Fun Noir. So stay with us and enjoy the trailer. A wise man once said that no good deed ever goes unpunished. Mr. Quinn, I need your help. He wasn't kidding. Uh, 
I said, I'd see Miss Alice home. Yeah, but I bet she didn't mention the risks. Did she? Monsters live out there. Okay, everybody, I think that was uh, pretty fantastic and something very intriguing to look forward to in the new season for Happy Hunting. And I'm very happy to introduce you to Xander Green, who some of you may recall we had on previously on the show for the Fantasy Fair Hunt. And Xander, welcome back. Thank you, Cinder. It's always a pleasure to be with you here on Happy Hunting, and uh, all the more so to sort of be, uh, in a way, joining the team here on Happy Hunting as well. So very exciting, and uh, always a pleasure. Well, we're certainly glad and delighted to have you here with us, and right now, I'd like you to expound a little bit on what The Black and Mirror is about and what our viewing audience can look forward to. I look, would really appreciate the opportunity to do that. It's a brand new video mini series that's going to be airing uh, really pretty soon. I think a little later on uh, in August, right here as this new segment on uh, on the Happy Hunting Show, and uh, soon after each episode airs, uh, it'll also be available on demand on the website. Um, of course, it's a story, a video uh, mini series in its own right. But of course, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't also a, an interactive hunt. Uh, the story itself is set in a number of actual destinations in Second Life, and so viewers can watch the show, they can look for the clues, uh, and uh, join in uh, on the story itself, uh, discover more clues as well as prizes. And so coming from a background in uh, the performing arts in the more traditional sense, theater, film, radio, and whatnot, uh, it's really exciting to have this as an opportunity in a new way to tell a story and yet do so in a way that's uh, more involves the audience directly. Uh, they can take take part in it in uh, a way that I think uh, a world this influenced by gamer culture has come to expect. So, um, in some ways, uh, we're doing we're back to the oldest uh, uh, oldest of professions, and in some ways, it's um, it's uh, brand new and a way to tell stories that uh, really is um, very state of the art and very exciting. Well, that sounds really fascinating, though I would say our surroundings aren't quite state-of-the-art. <laughs> well, it's uh, definitely as a setting goes, it's a little on the grubby, grimy, gritty side. If you like your hard-boiled detective story with a dollop of uh, horror and weird fiction, or the other way around, uh, then The Black and Mirror will definitely appeal to you. It's... Uh, uh, strikes notes people will recognize in genres such as the hard-boiled detective novel to the sort of horror, weird fiction of the early 20th century. Think H.P. Lovecraft, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, it's a it's a world that brings steampunk elements along with a kind of neo-Victorian. Uh, gothic element. Um, it hits on a lot of different genres and themes, and it's just incredibly fun to get to weave all that together into a, a story and, uh, like I said, tell that story in a way that can involve an audience um, in very exciting and, and, and cutting-edge ways. Well, I think that is going to be something definitely new and fun for our viewing audience to do. I mean, what can be better? A combination of hunt, a touch of mystery, a little adventure here it's and there? That's right, little romance. Um, stars Ashling Sinclair as the mysterious and beautiful Alice Ellen. Of course, we're all beautiful here in Second Life. So, uh, <laughs> uh, all, and, and Mornington as the very capable and beautiful uh, Dolores, Quinn's uh, secretary uh, slash gun mall, I guess you could say. And, yes, um, do not make the secretary mad. Bad right. move, people. And also Mavro McKaylee Sandy as the uh, laconic and actually not so beautiful um, Mr. Biggins, a character that's certainly well known and loved by Designing Worlds fans. And, um, and so um, Mav, I understand, is the fourth actor to uh, assay the role of Mr. Biggins. So it's quite a legacy uh, that uh, the Black and Mirror is taking taking part in in some ways by having that character. I think I, my understanding is people have favorite Mr. Biggins much like they have uh, favorite Doctor Whos. And so for the record, my, my favorite Doctor Who is uh, David Tennant and my favorite uh, Mr. Biggins is Mavro McKaylee Sandy. <laughs> well, we're all bound to have our favorites. But I think this is going to be something so fun to look forward so. to and to do. 
Uh, you called it, and uh, Safia Witterson, our director and executive producer, has been calling it as well, fun noir. And I think that's a, that's a great uh, catch-all uh, categorization uh, of what this is. And like I said, you know, if you, you know that, um, that, that, that noirish style of the 40s detective, a la Sam Spade, Mickey Spillane, and um, the character I get to play is a, a bit of that, a bit of that in him, as well as the little Indiana Jones, and also another bogey character, um, is a, a healthy dollop of Rick Rick Blaine from Casablanca in there as well. He's a bit of a an expatriate, um, an exile in a sense. So he gets to play that stranger in a strange land thing. As a detective, he's uh, gets to do the tough guy thing, but he also uh, he's a tough guy with a brain. So uh, it's pretty much a <laughs> to get to play. Really. <laughs> Pretty much a dream role to get to play. Yeah. Um, excuse <laughs> me. Uh, Cindis. Yes. Is that your name? Uh, okay. Yes. How long is this going to be? This is Dolores. Hi. How are you? Um, Hello. I can't help that my office looks like this. You know. I mean, this is basically a, a representation of what my paycheck is whenever I get it. So you know, I can only do so much. But I just want to know how long is this going to take because I canceled the hair appointment to be here, and. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need you to just wrap this up because he can go on and on and on forever. <laughs> okay. I can take a not-so-subtle hint. So I would guess that we will be wrapping this up. Xander, we are all going to be looking forward to The Blackened Mirror, Fun Noir. And uh, I just can say we are very happy that you are going to be so involved in the new project and have joined the Happy Hunting family so to speak. It's going to be a lot of fun. People can check it out uh, once the episodes start airing here on Happy Hunting. They'll also be able to watch them soon thereafter on demand and uh, also pick up other clues and uh, hints along the way to finding those all-important prizes at theblackendmirror.com. And uh, it's another um, you know, exciting element to play with to get to have also things like Facebook and Twitter and Plurk. And we'll be integrating all of these uh, into, uh, into the story and into the hunt as well. So people who are not necessarily in Second Life can also get a chance to have a little bit of fun in the, the hunt side of it as well. Well, that's going to be marvelous. And just as an aside, give her a raise and keep her happy. I, you just work here, you know. I, I really don't hold the strings. You're going to have to talk to the executive producers about that one. Okay. We will do our best. Okay. Well, thank you, Xander. This has thank been you. a lot of fun, and, and this is going to be marvelous. We are so looking forward to this, and uh, let's just see what further adventures are going to happen in the Blackened Mirror. Can't wait. All right. Thank you, Xander. Well, there you have it, viewers, our interview with Xander Green, who will be Quinn in the brand new The Black and Mirror series. I think you're going to find it pretty interesting and fun and uh, just a little challenging now and again. So I hope you'll join us for that and just have a great time taking part. Now, this is our first episode for our brand new season two. We will be having a lot more great episodes coming up with even more fantastic guests. So be sure to check our Happy Hunting blog at happyhuntingtv.wordpress.com for all the information about the upcoming guests and shows and, of course, the airtimes. So that's it for today. I'm happy that you joined us, and I hope you go out there and have a great time doing all the latest hunts and start checking out the hunts that are going to be starting fairly soon. So for right now, that's happy hunting, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.